So the plot that we're looking at here is the cool season NTEP water use study, which Dr. Johnson's already, you know, explained that NTEP is the National Turf, Turf Grass Evaluation Program. And one of the common things that we see with all of our research projects here is that we enjoy almost killing the grass and then bringing it back to life. So this study here, we're looking at three different irrigation treatments. We're looking at an 80% irrigation return, 60% and 40%. And what we're doing with this project is we're basically hand watering this entire thing. From our weather station here on the farm, we can calculate or retrieve that ET data and from there make calculations on how much water we need to replace onto these plots. And then three times a week, the students will go around and hand water this. If you have a good audio book, this is a perfect study to work on with. But Usually June 1st is when we started treatments, and then this goes for 10 weeks, and then we start to return normal irrigation right around September. And some of the observations, this, we don't do it justice right now because everything looks good, but some of the observations that we've noticed is that we can still see good turf at 60% ET irrigation. Um, we're looking at mainly two different types of grass. We're looking at Kentucky bluegrass and tall fescue. And the Kentucky bluegrass is a little bit more sensitive to drought stress than the tall fescue is. So what we've observed is earlier on the Kentucky bluegrass will tend to uh, go dormant quicker where the tall fescue will kind of hang on to its turf quality a little bit longer. However, when we get into the recovery phase, the Kentucky bluegrass will recover quite a bit faster than the tall fescue. So these tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass varieties, they're just standard varieties. Um, some of them are experimental varieties from different seed growers and some are commercial varieties that you can find at Home Depot or you know any seed supplier. But yeah, they're, studies like this are meant for the home lawn, the, you know, your city parks or athletic fields. They're meant to be, you know, used and, you know, played on, stressed out. Um, one thing, another thing we did notice is the first year we did this, we didn't treat for bill bugs. And the damage to the bill bugs, no matter what the treatment is, we saw huge declines in turf quality. Even with the 80% irrigation return, we saw that the damage that the bill bugs did to the turf was far more than what the drought could do. And no matter how much water you put on, you still couldn't mask that damage from the bill bugs. So since then, we've begun treating for bill bugs because we want to see how well it does with the drought conditions and not necessarily the insect damage. Because insect damage is something that, or insect control is something that we can do fairly easy in Utah with preventative treatments for things like bill bugs. But it's a fairly, it's, it's another one of those studies, like I mentioned on the putting green, where we're spending a lot of time on the putting green. We're almost spending just as much time on this one with weekly visual quality ratings. Um, we take digital images that we can use once a week to find percent green cover. So this is a fairly busy plot in the summer. Right now we're moving sprinklers around to make way for future studies, but this is a fun plot to look at in the middle of July when we can see you know, def you know, definite differences in the irrigation treatments.